Hey, what's happening? This is Andy. I am joined today by Matt Schotten from Papercut. How you doing today, Matt? I am doing fantastic, Andy. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being such a great supporter of Papercut and our partners. Always. Well, thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you in, in a little over a year now. We were discussing through some emails earlier the last time you and I um, got together. We were at an ACDI event in Lexington, uh, throwing some axes around. We had a good time that night. Um, you are in Texas, you said. How's Texas today? Yeah, this is beautiful. This is the, the best time of the year in Texas in spring. We, we got past the ice Mageddon and it hasn't got too hot for our summer yet. So absolutely beautiful outside. And I have to remind your, your, your audience that we weren't throwing axes at each other. They were at targets. Uh, but that was a fun, fun event. ACI, they do a great job at those events. And we, we did have a ton of fun. That was a good time. Um, yeah, those axe places, they showed up everywhere. I encourage everybody to uh, to go check them out before somebody has some sort of incident and, and they have to shut those down. You know that's a matter of time. Um, anyway, I wanted to check in with you. You guys have had a ton going on at Paper Cut. Uh, most importantly, you have added, yeah. entered into my fashion world here with a, with a little bit of a, a little bit of a branded Paper Cut co-branding here that we're doing. Uh, love your hat there. Yeah. So we're glad that we were able to get those to you in time. Uh, but in all seriousness, you guys had a, a, an event um, sometime in the last few weeks, and I thought this would be a good time to check in and, and have you tell us about it. Um, big event, and uh, what, what was it? Who was there? And what were you guys talking about? Why don't you start with that? Yeah, so on March 4th was um, our big date for channel availability for Papercut Pocket and Papercut Hive. So we decided to celebrate that with a channel webinar and done that before because it's been a while since we've launched a completely new platform. So every product like this is really built on something prior. They've been additions to Papercut MF. You know, uh, next week we've got version 20 of Papercut MF coming out. There's some really nice enhancements with that. Uh, with Scandifax, a completely new interface for, for, for HP um, and a host of other updates. But really those are, and, and don't let me forget about Microsoft Universal Print, right? So that's validating our cloud strategy and Microsoft Universal Print is now built into version 21. But as I was talking about, every version of Papercut was really built on a prior version. We haven't launched a complete new platform since, well, there wasn't a in the webinars back then. Uh, so this is our first channel webinar. I remember when we decided to do that in about uh, early February, I was like, wow, is anybody gonna show up? And we had an overwhelming response. We had 3,000 people attend from the channel. Oh. Um, since then, we've got that webinar up on our portal and we've gotten hundreds and hundreds of views. And we're really building on that momentum. We're really excited about the excitement that our channel and our customers have. And they're excited to hear about what Papercut's doing with the cloud. So this webinar, the updates that you did, um, you know, big, big part of that, like you said, is, and I hadn't realized um, that this was a completely new platform, right? So. Um, you know, for, for as long as, as Papercut's been around, it's all been kind of building on top of something else. And now you guys have uh, taken a completely fresh approach. Uh, what, what, pre what prompted this? What preempted this? Is this because of the, the move to the cloud with some of your management technology? Is this because of um, just it's time for a new platform? Uh, what, what is uh, the reasoning behind moving into, you know, um, this, this new platform uh, on top of the ones you already built? You know, and, and cloud's not something, it's not new for a paper cut. And we've been down the path of cloud for quite some time. So a number of years ago, we came out with paper cut views. This is a free product that's up on our website. Uh, we've, we've tracked over 1.4 billion pages uh, with paper cut views. And so that was a cloud native platform. And along the way, we've also added cloud native um, portions through continuous uh, delivery in paper cut MF, things like um, cloud sc uh, scan to cloud or uh, OCR in the cloud. Our mobility server is built with cloud printing in mind. The cloud's not really new uh, for Papercut. What's new is the Papercut um, Hive and Papercut Pocket platform. And we decided to do a line one rewrite with those to really take the best advantage of everything that comes with the cloud. So leveraging the best of Internet of Things uh, with our edge mesh technology really required that, that line one restart to really develop that agile and nimble platform we needed to meet customers' needs. So let's take a step back and talk about Hive. Um, you know, you had it as a, um, it, it was, it, you know, it was, it was in a trial form, I guess, for quite a while for, for um, some lucky customers that were able to, you know, kind of work with you along the way. Uh, it, it launched earlier this year and now you've had uh, an update. So um, I guess 
let's talk a little bit about what is Hive uh, for Papercut, and then um, you know what was this new update that you guys were talking about that's uh, that's going live right around now, actually. Yeah, you're right. It, it was probably about this time last year. I'm fairly new to Papercut. My um, time flies. I've been here eight months. Uh, but this time last year, I was at a, a channel partner, a, a great partner of, uh, of Papercuts, and they brought Papercut Pocket to me in a beta format. So as you mentioned, Papercut Pocket and Hive aren't new. Uh, we've taken a very deliberate approach to testing the product and strength testing and hardening the product to make sure it's ready for the market. So this phase of uh, channel availability that started March 4th and channel availability uh, starting tomorrow on April 6th uh, was really about channel confidence. It was about uh, the next milestone of, of releasing the product to all partners and all customers across the world, where we've had hundreds of customers testing the product, resellers across the world testing the product, and also helping us to mature the platform, making sure it has the right feature set to meet the needs, and that everything that they can get the support and stability and feature set that they need from that they expect from Papercut. So how does Hive fit in with I, IoT? That was another component that is um, you know, something new to our channel, right? But this is something that Papercut's bringing in, something that uh, you know, our resellers, your resellers are going to start managing if they haven't already. Um, this technology is gonna allow them to help get their arms around that. So, so uh, Hive is not necessarily just print related, right? You are moving into other areas and, and could you talk about that a little bit? Well, it certainly is print related and, and the business processes around printing and scanning and those type of things, but leveraging the, the best internet of things, you know, good correlation I'll give you. I was a little bit nervous about my internet this morning. We've been having some challenges at home. And so I had to reboot my edge mesh, but my edge mesh was my Wi-Fi edge mesh, right? So mm -hmm. prior to this, I was very home and I had a router upstairs and one downstairs. When you went upstairs, the, the uh, signal was weak and so you had to connect to the other router. And so with the advent of Internet of Things and edge technology, edge computing, uh, there's now an edge mesh in my home. And that allows me to have a single wireless, even though I still have two access points, one upstairs, one downstairs. It allows me to just have that ubiquitous upstairs, downstairs, and not just, it just works. And then we need to bring that same technology to printing, right? With printing, there's been a lot of challenges with printing with a print server, an application server. And if those things go down, what happens to the resilience of my printing system, right? We have those single points of failure. So we've implemented an edge mesh within printing as well. So the networks or the nodes across my networks, these are PCs and Macs and servers all working together as one edge mesh, eliminating that single point of failure, but ensuring that we have the best in class security, the best in class performance with no trade-offs when it comes to printing. So you know, with today, with what's going on and customers moving to these, um, you know, hybrid uh, situations where they've got people working at home, people working in the office, uh, how does this play into that? Is this helping add some security levels? Is this uh, helping coordinate? Now you've got multiple people in multiple locations. I, I kind of feel like this might, might be really, uh, you know, um, something that pulls it together a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, with, with COVID has really accelerated customers' demands for off network printing and cloud printing and things like that. Um, actually, you spoke with uh, uh, Dave Farrell back in uh, late October, and he had made us uh, claim that we had three and a half million users using our mobility server um, with books. Um, we pulled those numbers just a couple of weeks ago, and it's since doubled. We now have over seven million people using the mobility seven? server with Chromebook. Wow. Over seven million Chromebooks using the mobility server. Uh, we all with, um, have implemented off-network printing. So we now, you do not have to be connected to the corporate network, to the application server, to the print server, to print from Chrome or Mac or Windows. In just a couple of months after implementing that new technology, we have six or 7,000 customers that are using that off-network printing. And that allows that new way of working. So I could hit print today from home, hop on a plane, travel to our Portland office or any office across the world, and then release my print job. So we're doing that both with mobility server that can be coupled with Papercut MF, but also that's a native capability of our cloud native platform with the cloud node. So being able to print off network, an office that has an available printer and print anywhere you need to be. So we're seeing schools do that with teachers that need to print from home, uh, but then go to school and ret ret retrieve that. Or also just in the general business with people who are hybrid workers that the they're in flex schedules that maybe they are alternating every other day in the office or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the office and Thursday, Friday, flexibility from home, which is the same strategy that Papercut's taking. We're starting to re-entry our offices, 
but a lot of our employees were seeing the benefits of focus and flexibility of, of printing for our working from home. But then when they go to the office, that easy experience that the, the printing at home or printing in the office, how do we make that easy? So, so with that, when you're, um, you're moving people around and you're helping them um, with this, it would seem to be quite a challenge to roll this out. Yeah, you guys had three plus thousand people signed up for, uh, for that phase, right? For that early look at um, the new version of paper cut that's coming out. You mentioned, I think it said MF is coming out for the new Hive product uh, release that's coming out today. Um, what's next? You know, how, uh, you, obviously you're gonna keep playing these, these videos online, but what did you learn from this? Are you going to, um, I guess going forward, uh, what can you do to build on these releases and obviously the, ses- the success that you guys are having with them? How do, you, uh, how do you look at this going forward? really trying to build on the momentum of that webinar. So the, uh, the reception we got to that was tremendous and overwhelming. But ever since then, we've really been focusing on how do we uh, arm our, our channel with the tools and the confidence they need to go out and represent these products to the, to the channel. So we've got tremendous apps, assets on our partner portal. Uh, we have a thing called the Cloud Appreciation Network, which is myself and a number of other uh, subject matter experts across the company uh, doing short videos on, you know, what's latest and greatest with cloud and how can I can I upskill my own uh, cloud knowledge there. Uh, we've got some tremendous um, training. Uh, so we've got three different training courses specifically around cloud. We've got a sales course, uh, a technical course, and then also a support course. We're seeing tremendous adoption of that. So we're measuring all those things. We're also getting hundreds and hundreds of requests for NFRs. So resellers, channel partners, OEMs, um, and overall channel can get that software running in their own network. Uh, it's going to have benefits to them, but also how you learn. Uh, we'll have t- tremendous uptick for trials where customers are, maybe they're familiar with, with PaperCut, but they want to see how it works in the cloud. Uh, so we're supporting them with trial licenses and then our paid licenses, even though we're going in ge- general availability on April 6th, We've been selling this product for quite some time and week on week, we're seeing really tremendous growth of, of customers adopting the software. Well, it seems like um, you know, what we've been dealing with in the last 12 months is, is only gonna kind of push this along um, faster than it was already you know, moving before, before we hit all these issues. Um, just a little bit of refresh. I believe that this still works with every printer, right? I mean, every, every printer brand is supported with paper cut. Um, is it all scanners, faxes, everything, right? All, literally all imaging hardware at this point is, is supported. Even if, if you're not partnered with, with a brand, um, you can support it. Is, is that still the case? Yeah, really the goal with paper cut overall is printing from any device. So that means any desktop OS or any mobile OS. A lot of customers are coming to us for print enablement. How do I just make it simple from my Apple or Android device? How do I print from my, my Chromebook, my Mac, my Windows? And you know, in a lot of environments have all of those things. So how do I enable to print from any device to any device? So that, that OEM neutral approach, we will always have that. Um, we do not have all brands uh, as of April 6th on the Hive platform. The most popular brands will be there in place. And we have a really robust roadmap of rounding that out. Uh, just over the next couple of months, we'll have all of the brands. So we have most of the tier one brands today, um, and we'll have all of the brands in, in short order uh, for the embedded support. But even without embedded support, so I can hit file print right now to my PaperCut Hive Edge Mesh, and I'll get a pop up on my phone uh, immediately, and then I can choose that PaperCut Hive mobile app or the PaperCut Pocket mobile app. With a mobile release, I can now release to any device as long as a print driver, USB or network, I can print to any device. And so that works out of the box today across. And also that gives a lot of flexibility and much more modern approach to printing and also a contactless one. I can hit file print, uh, bring it up on the mobile app and choose my printer from a list or scan a QR code or an NFC code directly on the device and enable that contactless mobile experience at the device. I can't help but think that approach, you know, as, as um, I mean, everybody had a place at home to work. Most people, a lot of people had printers at home, right? But very few of them probably took the time to set up the security that they really needed. Uh, I would think that type of approach that, uh, that you just went through and you, what you just described sounds like a great way for a company to maybe definitely protect themselves um, as their people are home instead of, uh, you know, printing on their home printers, maybe opening up some vulnerabilities that, that aren't, you know, normally involved in my work week as an IT support person. Um, now I've got people all over. If I can get them printing on this, if I can get them, you know, using this technology at home the way they were using it at work, 
it's kind of another way to just continue to protect that that company, right? So I'm looking at this from where I said it's an opportunity for dealers to go back to uh, imaging dealers, resellers to go into their customers and say, what are you doing for remote printing? What are you doing for your remote worker? Uh, what are they printing to? How are they accessing your network? And, and, and it seems to me you have um, a really nice approach for them to uh, add another layer of security or at least try to, you know, <laughs> make people as secure as they can be when they're home and they're outside of the domain of that IT person. Is that a, you know, is that a fair statement, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of our design centers as well to support printing, no matter where you're at, whether you be at a home office, a remote office, and regardless of what type of network you're on. So that's the beautiful thing about the edge mesh. I do have that running in my couple of PCs at home. It's communicating with my home office printer. Um, and there's certain organizations, MPS providers that are looking for, how do I potentially bill for that? Or how do I reverse my employees for their home office printing? Or and how do I know that's not personal office printing? They're printing pictures of their cats at yeah. and we need to be able to track that. And so we could do that with uh, paper cut hive. We could track that home office printing, allocate that also making sure it's secure, but also enabling the, the, the dealer community to capture meters off those devices. And so traditional data collection agents can't reach into the home office over a WAN to get meters off of that device. So based on feedback from one of our largest partners, we've now built that in and via the Hive cloud atmosphere uh, dashboard, they can see the actual meters on the device. And that's also opening up for our third parties to come in and, and uh, leverage that edge mesh. And it's acting in a way to go get those meters and move that into the cloud in a way that the, uh, the partners can see it. A lot of end users as well are turning off um, wide area networks. The reseller I came on, we had 17 offices across the country. But once we moved our ERP and our, our CRM and a lot of our core business applications and went to Office 365, there really wasn't a need for corporate WAN anymore. And there's a lot of cost in that. So we turned it off. But, you know, that also means that traditional, um, you know, print servers didn't, weren't working. And then data collection agents weren't able to communicate with those remote offices to manage supplies and meters. And so these are new ways of working. And the edge mesh is going to enable us to reach into those environments, regardless if it's a remote office or a home office and collect usage or understand enable printing and secure that printing. Very cool. Well, it sounds like Papercut is just continuing to chug along, uh, you know, despite everything we're all dealing with. Um, you're keeping people busy. You guys have, uh, I, I remember some of the interviews we did last year, the big the big word was just the, the amount of training that was going on. Uh, clearly, people are very interested in, in um, your, you know, where you're going with everything and uh, these next steps that are uh, going to be coming out over the next few days, few weeks. So um, thank you so much for taking the time, Matt. And, uh, you know, any last shout outs, any last things you'd like to uh, to say to the to the viewers before we shut down? Yeah, no, this has been tremendous. And Andy, thank you so much for, for supporting us, giving me this opportunity to come and talk and, and reach out to us, reach out to your ASCs, your channel partners. We're here to support you and uh, we're excited about where we're headed with the cloud and want to bring you on that journey with us. Matt, thank you so much. Good seeing you and we will catch up next time. Take care. All right. Thanks, Andy. Bye-bye.